Good morning, everyone. She is a former TV anchor and reporter who spent the past six years working on a piece of Milwaukee history. It's an idea born when Joanne Williams found an old school newspaper from Rufus King High School. The result, a documentary that was a hit at this year's Milwaukee Film Festival. And there's a positive message for all of us. A robust crowd here at Milwaukee's Oriental Theater for the premiere of The Exchange in White America, Kakana and King 50 years later. 1966 presents a very clear moment where the seeds of resistance are being sown. The documentary tells the story about a class project from 1966. It was a very exciting time. I mean, there was a civil rights movement that was happening. Things were changing, people were dressing differently. You know, the change was in the air and it felt like we were part of something that was good and, and necessary. Ruth Thomas, a teacher at Rufus King High School in Milwaukee, and Thomas Schaefer, an English teacher at Kakana High School, arranged an exchange between students. They performed the play In White America to increase racial awareness. White students lived with black families and black students lived with white families. And I was never scared. I was just pretty much astonished. The purpose of the exchange was to find out how other people lived and to perform the play, but to do that, they had to find out they had to live with each other. And student recollections are vivid. When we go into the burger joint, the smaller kids would look at me, this you know, tall African-American young male in high school, and they say, do you play with the Green Bay Packers? That's the first time that I had been introduced to James Brown music. Uh, because it was prominent down there. I mean, that was a big part of their, their social group. Even with, with the white students there, James Brown was a big part of the music scene, but it wasn't up here. And so that, that was my first introduction to it. So my dancing skills down there just weren't anywhere near where they should have been, so. And I was like, I don't know, where is Kakana? In Kakana 50 years ago, this would have been the first time that we would have seen really anyone that wasn't a white descent. Linda Pluchek, now 74 years old, took part in the exchange. Phyllis stayed with Linda Pluchek in Kakana. Then Linda lived with Phyllis's family in Milwaukee. Pluchek, who now lives in the Madison area, came to Milwaukee for the premiere. It made me not afraid of black people. And at that point, in terms of Kakana and whatever, people were honestly afraid of black people. As a former teacher, this had to have been a major lesson plan. I met Father Grappi when I was here then, and then I marched with him in um, Madison. Producer Joanne Williams is honored her project was selected for the Milwaukee Film Festival. It makes me feel uh, grateful and um, very happy and incredibly nervous. Much of the old footage comes from TMJ4 archives. I learned a lot about before I thought a lot of people were very snobbish and they sort of looked down on you, but they don't. They, they want to, you know, go out and meet you, but they, they're sort of afraid. Kakana is very small, you have to get used to it. It's very hard to adapt to. I think in 1966, the black population of Kakana was one. Producer Gary Reistat was one of the writers on the film. I grew up in Appleton, which is just a couple of miles south of Kakana. This whole exchange program went on a couple of miles from my house, I never heard a thing about it until Joanne started talking about it a few years ago. William's sons also worked on the project. J.B. Nicholson helped with production and son Christopher Nicholson did social media. Was there any times where you had to tell your mother what to do? <laughs> yes, there were. There were times where I had to tell her what to do, especially with the marketing and social media side. I assisted my mother in audio, visual, and lighting. So whenever she needed a place to interview, to interview her subjects, I would just help her out look for a location. And one striking revelation, in the wake of today's deep divisions, the exchange gave those who participated hope. This shows that we all can come together. It's a very good uh, cross-cultural experience to show that we don't have to let our differences define us. It was a long process, six years, but every minute was absolutely worth it. Just a great lesson to sit and watch and listen and learn. Everybody is just human. It, it was just such a wonderful experience. I learned how important it was for 
black people and white people to share their backgrounds because our differences made us stronger. Linda would kiss me on this cheek, my daughter would kiss me on the other one, and out they go. And I said, you know what? I felt the same when both of them kissed me. You know, it was no different. Really is a great film. I really encourage everybody to watch it. The Milwaukee Film Festival wrapped up this week. And a reminder, MKE Film has projects and events, even discounts, all year long. You can find more information at mkefilm.org.